Hello, welcome back to Graceful Embroidery. My name is Hazel Tunbridge and I love creating embroidery designs, especially for my new machine, which is the Husqvarna Epic 3. I'm going to do a second stitch out on this machine for you and we do things a little bit differently so we can learn a few more features of the machine. This is a slightly larger design. It's a heart, as you can see here on the screen. And I was hoping it would fit in the, the four and a half uh, square hoop, um, but it didn't. So it has to go in a 240 by 150 hoop. And looking at it here, I suddenly realised that probably because you can see I've I've put this nice pale pink silk dupion in my hoop and the slubs go horizontal and the heart's the wrong way around and it won't look quite right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it or see if we can turn it. We can see there's a little bit of space each side. So let's see how it goes. So we select it. And down here, you can see little arrows. And we click on that and immediately this pops up here. And we can see that we can move it to the side or to up, but we can also do 90, deg 90 degree angle increments. So we'll do one, two, three, four. And as you can see, it does fit nicely inside that hoop. And I think that is a much better way of stitching it out on this particular silk dupion that I've put in my 240 by 150 hoop. So now it's all ready, we click stitch out. And last time we looked at this page, I didn't notice that you can actually scroll up and see a lot more. Now we've got um, those up there we could see before. We can sort our colour blocks, but I've done that when I was digitising. We can select the deluxe sis, the stitch system, and we can also do this one here, which is basting around the design and basting around the hoop. Now, if you've got slippery fabric that you're a little bit worried about puckering, there's absolutely no reason why you can't do both. And we're going to do both today. And I prefer selecting this here than later on when we're in the stitch out men menu page. And here we can do our thread cut options. I've been for the last few weeks, I've been using my machine with the thread cut options off, but it's not ideal. I There are pros and cons and no doubt there's another video in that, but I'm going to do automatic cutter and automatic jump stitch trim. I always want this information to come up so I won't tick that box and I'm going to do apply. And you can see the embroidery arm coming up. Needless to say, before I started this design, um, the first thing I did was clean out my bobbin area. I've not put a new needle in. Um, it's not that long ago since I put one in. And it tells me to make sure the hoop is attached properly. I'm making it look extremely difficult because the camera is in the way. There you are, two finger click and it's all in place. Let's come back to the screen here. We've attached the hoop. And as you can see, we've got a color block option come up here and it's telling us it's going to do ba both lots of basting. Now, I hope you can see we've got two boxes here. We've got one box that goes around the hoop and then we got a second box inside, which is just around the design. So that's holding everything in very nicely. I'm just going to show you a little bit of each colour as I stitch it out and then we'll see if anything goes wrong and how we, uh, we sort that out and how we finish the design off. Let's 
let's have a look at what we've done so far and I'll press this middle button here which will bring the hoop forward into trimming mode so we can see the design. Now this heart has many elements from my existing collections but it does have a few new ones as well so I've been playing around and unlike so many hearts which are often just the shape of the heart this one I've actually filled with embroidery. So there are our little leaves and those who are familiar with my designs will know that comes from Pamela's Joy collection. stitched out two more colours now. Um, as you can see I'm opting to go for lots of greens and lemons and nice spring colours. Now I know that tomorrow is or probably when you actually see this video it's Valentine's Day and we tend to think of reds and pinks. I'm not a great fan of red so I'm doing a spring type heart but obviously with this design you can choose any colour you want and it's going to be free but you won't find out how to get it unless you watch to the end. As your, as your design is stitching out you have some choices as to what you do what's there what you do here on the screen. Now this, I'm just going to close this. Right, this picture here, we have the design that's stitching out and it's showing in ghost mode. That means only the colour that is being stitched out at the moment is visible and everything else is greyed out. And it's at 100%, we can see that by up here. So if we go there, we can zoom much closer. We can zoom to hoop and zoom to um, design. So I'm going to do those now. Zoom to hoop takes it right out. And zoom to ball just takes it to the design. The stitch out progress at the bottom here. So that's all showing on the screen. And back just a tiny bit so you can see everything. I apologize for that. So it goes this dark red colour or dark bricky colour when it's when it's selected and when you click it it disappears. Now here on here with our stitch out progress we can see each colour and it tells us we're on the this colour here which is number six and it tells us it's sulky rayon white of white which is 1071 and we're 39 percent through the stitch out of the design down here we can see that there's a total of 12 colors in this part and we're halfway through it tells us that there are 19,682 stitches and we are on 72 well, it's moving as I say but we're up to 7,000 on this level here, we have this colour. So this figure here reflects the whole design and they say 22 minutes. This here shows us it's from stitch to, well, we don't know what it started at, but it goes up to 4,946 and that will take us five minutes. I've noticed that these are not always showing that accurately sometimes. And it is improving since the last update. However, if I stop the machine, remember 
the machine doesn't stop immediately. It stops at the end of the element that it is stitching. And here you can change the stitch. If you've got a thread break, because um, I wanted one, it hasn't happened. But if you had a thread break or your bobbin ran out and you're in the middle of a satin leaf, you need to go back. So we're at 7604 and I can go back and you can hear it moving. And if you go into the middle here, you get a little menu come up. And I'm going to put 7604, which was where we were. And I'm going to click OK and it goes back to where we were. And I've just pulled the thread out. Rethread that, excuse me. When you're filming machine embroidery, you can guarantee that you feel like a novice because you're concentrating on more than one thing. And if something's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong when you're filming an embroidery. So that is what we get on the, the stitch out progress. Now we can open another window up here, which shows our threads and their numbers and it moves down. Now, if you have both of these open, you can't really see the design before underneath. If you click on this, you, you can move it across, but you can't move it any further than there. Move it up, just and close this one. We've got this here, and that can move it up and down. And we could put it that's as high as it will go, and that's as far over it will go. Stitch out progress doesn't check. I haven't found a way of changing the size of this. So if you've got both of these open, you need to adjust. If you want to see the design, you can, I'm using, you can pinch your fingers and pull it out. If you want to go and look at a particular area of the stitch out. So you've got to play really and find out what suits you the most. I personally prefer the stitch out progress rather than this one, but I need this one if I want to planning ahead to see which thread comes next. So you've just got to play with these and decide what suits you the most. I've just seen a thread here. underneath other stitchings. broken thread so as you can see I keep my snips up here and I've I've always pulled my thread through but I'm learning not to although on this instance I have to because the thread 
has disappeared up inside the machine. Now, I'm going to go back one stitch at a time. I think it's stopped between two elements. Yes, it finished doing a little flower and uh, so I can thread it back up. But it's always good to check why your machine has stopped and the thread has broken and also to check what it was stitching out and whether you need to go back a few stitches to avoid a gap because sometimes it doesn't stop exactly where the break has occurred. about that yellow in all honesty um, I think compared to the other colors in our design it could be a little bit too bright and that was 1135 I think I should have put 1067 or 1066 which is called primrose but never mind it's done now you know how fussy I am about color We're going back to our lovely um, pale warm, it's a pale warm green, I, I love this one. There we can see all the stitches that we're going to stitch being highlighted. I lit on the, the screen there. And we got two more colours. We're now stitching up the middles of the flowers. Just little French knots going into the centre of these des designs. You will notice there are elements here from Sweet Innocence and also from Le Baby Royale. I can't remember what the others are at the moment. Now, the light has failed uh, while I've been doing this stitch out. It's now the sun's going down and it's a very dismal day. It's been raining all day anyway. Um, I apologise for the colours looking different as you watch. Right, we've got our last colour here and uh, it shows that it's Ecru, which is Soggy Rayon 1082. Oh, mustn't forget to thread it. And we'll stitch this out. Let's put the stitch progress back on. And we can see that it's six minutes left for a, just over a thousand stitches. But of course, if it's doing the centres of flowers, it's going to have to stop and start. So if you didn't want, if you wanted to speed it up, you probably, let's see what happens. Going to touch settings, going to touch embroidery, and I'm going to the thread cut options. Now that's interesting. We had them on but we selected it from a different screen. And they're showing here as off. So if you've 
so it would appear that if you selected them to be on in the settings for the design that overwrites the embroidery settings for the for, for the whole machine interesting oh well what we're we going to do there we can't do <laughs> embroidery is finished but I'm just going to do one more thing as you will see this hoop has these areas here where we can put in these clips I'm having to go through my clips because some of them are just not grabbing tight enough so they need to be got rid of that one is a little bit tighter, but they are they meant to help with keeping the fabric in the right place. But I don't always bother on this size hoop, anything larger apart from the 200 by 200. Yes, I do. But we have these boxes that we put in on the beginning and we're going to do them again just to see. I need to select the based feature and click both of them and I'm going to thread up the machine with red thread and I'm going to stitch them again and they will show us whether the fabric has moved in the hoop there's going to be some pull in from the embroidery at the sides understanding the pull and push that happens on your fabric with your embroidery where so sort of something as a digitizer you have to know but we're going to stitch them out and just see how well this has been hooped because it didn't have the clips and i don't have any cohesive bandaging on here and I didn't hoop, I only hooped the stabiliser, not the fabric. So let's quickly stitch those out and see the difference. Now, as you can see, there's a very slight gap here, but not very much. Top and bottom's fine, but as you would expect, there's, it's pulled in just a tiny bit in the middle. Let's see what the other one does. Those are quite good results. I'm pleased with that. There's not been a great deal of movement at all. But then these embroideries are, are with small little elements. There are no very large areas of satin fill or, or, or tatami fill, which would take up a lot more, cause more pull and push. So just wanted to show you that that's if you use these um, boxes and all my designs come with them anyway they're called outline alignment stitches I just thought that little exercise would show um, how well what your hooping skills are like now to get this design you need to join the graceful embroidery group forum now, if you go to Graceful Embroidery Room, you'll see on the main uh, menu, um, it says forum. And if you go on that page, it gives you all the instructions. 
It's free to join, doesn't cost you anything. The only thing that you must do is open an account at Graceful Embroidery. And when you do that and you join the group, the, the group forum, that enables you to go into an area of the group forum and uh, have certain privileges. Right, we have this design is the free design for February. So you need to, if you'd like to have this design, you need to join the Graceful Embroidery Group Forum. It's a private group. It's 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 got there are no adverts. It's nothing like Facebook groups or anything, and it's run exclusively by me. Um, and I'm very careful about who I let in. So you will find that you get a questionnaire and you have to answer quite a few questions to prove that you are a machine embroiderer because we don't want any spanners spammers in the group. And uh, there are lots of things happening within the group throughout the year including competitions and lots and lots of things happening when we have our birthday event. But that's not till September. Ooh, yes. Better start thinking about the daily freebies for that. Anyway, if you go to the group forum page, you'll find out all about it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a little bit more about your Epic 3. I certainly have. Every time I use it, I learn something else. It's an epic machine. It's lovely and I'm really pleased with it. But I'm going slowly. I'm not going mad mad and that I've not done any. I've done a tiny bit of sewing on it, but not an awful lot. I, this machine is really for my embroidery. You may have caught a, a glimpse of my epic too in this video over there in the corner. And that's the machine I use for sewing. I think I've waffled on long enough for, for today. So please subscribe to this channel. Do leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this heart and whether you choose these light colours or whether you'd go for reds and pinks. And uh, I just say happy Valentine's Day and uh, happy embroidering when you next turn your machine on. And until next time, have fun and learn more features. Whatever machine you have, uh, there's always a lot to learn and I'm very keen that these videos, I'm waffling again, these videos on the Epic 3 are not exclusively about just it, that they have other tips in them about embroidery. So that I'm trying to make them for everybody. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care.